ethically, I feel okay with that decision. I feel okay with the eggs that I'm buying and the fish that I'm sourcing. Hey everyone. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's good to be here. Where else would we be? Just a lazy Wednesday afternoon, having lunch with our favorite people. That's it. It's an eating show, which means yes. you've got to eat with us. So yes. pause the video if you need to, go and grab yourself a vegan meal and come back and eat with us. Them's the rules. You have to eat with us when you're watching a mukbang. Unless it's like, some people message and they say it's, it's one like o'clock in, in the morning. one o'clock in the morning or I just ate. Yeah. No. Anyway. Get a glass of water, whatever, it's <laughs> fine. So welcome to another mukbang video yes. now, today. Which is interesting because mukbang is actually Korean. Right? Ah, there you go. We've got a Korean inspired dish. Yes. So this what have we got? This is so good. Can I just say how good this smells? It's good. It's wonderful. Yeah. Oh. So it's a spicy braised tofu dish. Um, the recipe was sent to us by one of our followers. I can't remember who, if that was you. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's become a weekly staple in our house. Really, really nice. It's uh, being served on a bed of stir fry coleslaw with kale and br uh, brown and red rice. And I've I'm also got nodding, black beans. I have no idea Luca does this. Sprinkling of green or spring onion and uh, white sesame seeds. It's pretty good. It's awesome. It's, it's good. so good. We have chopsticks for aesthetics. <laughs> We're probably not going to use them. We can use them, but in a mukbang situation, you know, where we're responding to a thing, it's... It's just too you know, much going on. You, you're probably going to thank us if we <laughs> stick to the knife and fork. And you know what? I can I, do it if I concentrate, you know. Yeah, but, but if, you if can't I'm, concentrate and I'm eat I'm not a great multitasker, it's not as happen. our regular viewers would know. Uh, but also, I find that your muscles start to hurt over time. A little cramp in the little sort of... Little cramp, it's like... Yeah, yeah? Yeah, it's like an exercise. You have to do it regularly to be really good at the chopsticks. Yes. And we haven't done it for a long time. No, so practice makes the gonna... master. So if you don't I use it, you lose it. You know the drill. What I, do I want to take a thumbnail or something? Like, what oh, am I maybe doing? Maybe you do, actually. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I don't know. All right. I don't think we need a thumbnail for this one. Let's eat. Let's eat. Oh Let's my do gosh. it. What are you guys eating? Let us know in the comments below and let everyone else know so yes. that you can share vegan recipe ideas. Always handy. Absolutely. We can love... never have enough vegan recipes, eh? Never. We love hearing what you guys eat. Yeah. Now you know everyone's going to ask for the recipe. Mm. You're going to give it to them, or you're going to remember, or what are you going to do? I can link it down below. Yeah. And we varied it because we don't like spicy, mm. so I replaced most of the mm. chili pepper for paprika, and for us that does the job. Beautiful. Just a little bit of chili, uh, cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. I want to show you this too. The original calls for like a lot really of chili spicy. flakes. Really spicy. Because Korean food is spicy, mm. right? This is enough for us, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to show you this, but I'm going to try and not drop the sesame seeds on the laptop. Can you see it? It's, it's beautiful. Mm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, really it's a really good recipe. As I said, it's become a weekly staple in our house. Yeah. So that's the food. I was going to say, Luca oh. does most of the cooking in our place. And I feel like I want to clone you and send you out to our audience. Everyone needs a little Luca in the kitchen because you've got really creative. I've got really. a little more creative <laughs> recently. Yeah, I was yes. going through a patch there where it was the same things because they were quick and easy. And not that this isn't quick and easy, mm. but I was just in a routine, wasn't I? Yeah. And you know, when you're in a routine, it's just you do a bit of the same old, same yeah. old. So people it's kind of like eating animal products. That's one of the excuses that people use mm. because they're like, you know, it's just what I've always done. You know. Exactly. So people watching us on Instagram stories are like, oh, Luca, come to my kitchen, come and cook for me. There's been some good stuff lately, huh? There has been. Um, we have a recipe ebook. Admittedly, this meal is not in the recipe ebook. I'm sorry. Because we've had the edition. recipe book for quite some time, but yeah, this recipe was just shared with us recently, yeah. wasn't it? So. so I can't send Luca out to your kitchen. Mm. I can't even give you this in the recipe ebook, but our older stuff is in that book. Mm. <laughs> That's as close as you're going to get to Luca in your kitchen. So I'm not sure that's a good or a bad thing. No. The food's alright. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Mm. Yum. A few bites before we get into things. Oh! By the way, um, we have... I know we just announced this like the last mukbang or the one before that, but we have kind of finalised more of our dates for the oh, yeah. 2019 vegan activism tour that we're doing. It's the least we can do activism tour. I'm going to pop the dates up now. Um, you can pause and check. 
what's going on. That's really taking shape. It's so exciting. All the events are going to be posted on our Facebook page, That Vegan Couple. Of Some course. of them are already there. Yes, on events. Just click the events tab and as the events are all organized, they're going to be posted there. As soon as the first few started to go up, I'm like, oh my God, the baby is forming. It's beautiful. That's right. I mean, they were exciting. great to us last year in the US, the UK and Ireland. And we're mm. so excited this year for Israel, Canada and Europe. Um, it's just, it's amazing. It's the, great. The, the activism workshop, the meetups, all of the actions. It's fantastic. It's very good. So I know a lot of people have been messaging and asking when you come here, when you're going there. Um, yeah, it's on the screen now. And everything, all the updates will be on Facebook. And I'm spitting out, <laughs> spitting out sesame seeds. <laughs> yeah, Instagram is also where we'll keep things up to date as they're being planned later on. Yeah, so turn on notifications if you haven't already. Yes. Mmm, lovely. So that's like the update in our world. Mm. And this is so random. Game of Thrones fans. Can we just have a Game of Thrones moment? Because last night we found... Well, I was just going to say... Yeah. We were not fans until a year ago. Yeah, we I know, knew it, we knew it was a worldwide phenomenon, but we were very late to the party. We kind of resisted it. We're like, oh, if it's that popular, then you know, we just don't want to be so mainstream. <laughs> yeah, right. God, if we get into it, oh, we well. loved it. Oh, we knocked off all seven seasons in a very short period of time. We were just hooked. <laughs> um, so anyway, good. you wouldn't even know what. GOT stood for at a certain period of time. That's embarrassing. Don't tell people that. I know. No, it's funny. It's funny. I'm into self-deprecation, you know. <coughs> oh no, um, I drank on Christ. No. <coughs> do you need a? Do you need a? You're good. Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh wow. I was just looking for an excuse to uh, to <laughs> knock me out. Wait, wait. <coughs> you got it. It was a half-eaten sesame seed. Yeah. Talking and eating, it's wow. Oh my god, I've got a sweat. That is so bad. Oh, yeah. I look really fresh. No, you're good. You're okay. You're oh, okay. Do you need some water? I'm okay. <coughs> yeah. Death by sesame seed. Can I eat it again? What's the protocol? If you choke on something and you cough it up, do you eat it or do you put it in a It sleep? really depends whether you're putting yourself out there on YouTube or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to have a problem with it if it's you and I. I bet you there are some people watching who wouldn't have a put problem. Put it down, with it. Natasha. You know, I'm just going to put it there. <laughs> Pulling back in the bowl, and I can imagine some it. people are going to be fixated on that sesame seed for the rest of this video. Is it still there? Is it still there? Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. Needed water in the end. Isn't it awful? It's such <laughs> it's a so terrible feeling. feeling. It's the worst because you can't. There's nothing to alleviate it immediately. You just got to sort of ride it out. Oh. <laughs> Who can feel me right now? Are you feeling me? Because I think I look disgusting. It's I feel terrible. Like I'm you feel like your eyes are going to pop out. It's just <laughs> awful. Because you get this, sometimes you kind of get tingles or shivers. Yeah, something. and you feel like you've scratched your throat, like whatever that tube yeah. is. It feels like it's just been. Yeah, it's the track here. That's, see the that, note, that noise? Yeah. That's what's happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to Game of Thrones. So, here's the news. Official trailer was released a few days ago, which was awesome. Winter is coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the final season is released April 14. Yes. Yes. Very excited. Yes. Cannot wait. So while this is all happening, a friend of ours asked if we could contact one of the Game of Thrones people because she's following us on Instagram. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Natalie Emmanuel. Oh my gosh. It's so isn't it? Amazing. I know. Mm. Right? And she has... Like three and a half million followers almost on Instagram. Incredible. So we were like just casually messaging. And she said, I love you guys. <laughs> she says, well, she didn't say I love you. Didn't she? She said, I'm <laughs> a oh, big fan of you guys. Sorry. It's in front of you. Oh, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> huge fan of you guys. She says, I'm a huge fan of you guys. Cool. Amazing. I cannot believe it. So awesome. So Small there you go. Up. And how incredible is it that so many of the Game of Thrones people yeah. are vegan or, or at least eating plant based diets? So Peter Dinklage and Jerome Flynn. Flynn? Flynn? Yeah. Yep. And Natalie. So there you go, that's our little, like, what is that? I don't know. A little bit of excitement in our life, yeah. aside from me choking on sesame seeds. <laughs> but great to know that Natalie <laughs> is following a vegan activist account. I know. And that mm -hmm. she's a fan of I the know. content that we put out. I can't believe which it. Which is activist related, so that's fantastic. I'm very, very, very cool. Anyhow. Oh. How are you doing, alright? I'm, okay. I'm just going to, like, fix myself. Moving on to the topic of today's video. Yes. It's a response video. And in our, one of my recent response videos to Moon and Rock, mm. at the end of that video, we said, we know of another 
YouTuber who is going, who has gone back to eating animal products and will likely put out a video at some point in the future. Yes, it yep. was Bonnie Rebecca. Yes. So we have known about Bonnie for a little bit of time and yeah, obviously we weren't going to say anything about it. We were hoping that she would go back to eating uh, a vegan diet. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened and she put out her video. So we have to respond. Yeah, I mean, she's got 362,000 subscribers here on YouTube mm. and 424,000 followers on Instagram. So she's influencing a lot of people and a lot of impressionable people because yeah. a lot of uh, Bonnie's demographic that follows her are young girls, uh, often a lot younger than Bonnie is herself. So we're talking teen girls, really. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, they look up to people. They look up to Bonnie. And so basically, um, we got so many requests to make a response oh video. Uh, we were just looking at the messages like the last, I don't know, what's it been, 24 hours or so? Yeah, more requests for this video than any other video I can think of. By far, and we've been on YouTube for over four and a half years and we're like, we have never had this many requests. We haven't even opened all the messages because we're like... Oh. Yeah, even Kalel, for example, <laughs> who has almost two million subscribers mm. here on YouTube, mm -mm. we didn't have quite more. as many requests for her response video as we have had for Bonnie. So. So we had to respond. Of we course. had to respond. Let's okay. We've got notes in front of us. Let's probably keep looking down. I got my mouse. Um, so what a lot of people were saying was they're feeling very distraught. They're feeling shocked. I'm using people's words that have messaged us. Heartbroken, disillusioned, disappointed, unsure, unsettled. They're worried about the future of veganism. <laughs> I keep spitting things out. Oh my gosh. Um, they're worried about. Will people start to follow Bonnie back to eating animal products? Um, they're starting to worry about their own health. They're questioning everything. And these comments just keep going on and on and on. These kind of words that were being used, but people were messaging us. And so the first thing I want to say is we really urge people to stop attaching their understanding of veganism, their feelings of veganism, everything they associate with veganism onto YouTubers or Instagrammers. It's not about these individual social media people. It's about the animals. If you're questioning things at this point, what you should be questioning is, am I a vegan activist? And if I'm not an activist, why am I not an activist? And how can I get involved? They're the questions you should be asking. And also if you're questioning veganism because a YouTuber that you follow goes back to eating animal products, then you have to question, have you made a strong enough ethical connection with veganism yourself? Mm. So watching documentary films like Dominion, for example, that helps concrete and solidify that ethical connection. Yeah, very, very, very important to remember. As well as getting active, as you said. Yes, um, important to remember that veganism is not a diet. Yes, what we eat is a large component of veganism because the majority of animal abuse, exploitation and murder happens for our food and it's not food, it's violence. Um, so that's why there's a heavy focus on the diet side, but it's about a lot more than just what we're eating or who we're eating, we should say. So very important to get that full education, to understand the ethics, to make that connection with the victims, the animals, so that you're not feeling so thrown every time one of these, you know, online celebrities, shall we say, um, decides to go back to, to eating animal products, right? So just, yeah. And that's not to say that the people who are messaging us are flipping and going back. They're just feeling very unsettled and, and kind of um, shaken up a little bit about this. So, but basically don't put people on pedestals is what I'm saying. I think that's the main message yeah. at this point. Yeah. So... Yeah. We had a bit of an issue with the title of Bonnie's video. It's, mm. you know, why I'm no longer vegan. And <clears throat> the problem that we have and the issue that we have with that title is that we can see it being added to the playlist mm. titled, I'm no longer vegan, that anti-vegans compile and throw in the faces of vegans and say, see, look at all these ex-vegans. Yeah. And we say ex-vegans because we do have a video which we speak about in all of our response videos mm. like this called, you're either vegan or you're not. So we and, recommend that people watch that. Yeah, because it goes into depth mm. uh, in terms of what we mean by that. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, you stop seeing animals as here for us. You see them as here with us. Yeah. You stop seeing it as food. <coughs> you see it as violence. Yeah. And it's not some. Once you start seeing animals in that way, you can't unsee them in that way. Yeah. Do we recommend people watch that video? 
so yeah, the, the title was the first thing that kind of got us and went, oh. Um, could she have used something like, um, I have something shocking to share with you, or I have, I have something I need to tell you all. I don't know, something like that that's not just the standard why I'm no longer vegan. I just, <laughs> I don't know, that's what I would have done, but of course I wouldn't do it because I'd never go back to any animals, but anyway. Um, so an okay. another issue is that Bonnie only says that she doesn't blame veganism for her issues at the very end of her video. Now the thing is, Bonnie's video is around 40 minutes long. So any not yet vegan person viewing Bonnie's video is going to think, oh, if they don't watch it all the way through to the very end when she mentions that, that the vegan diet caused her issues, her health issues, and that's why she's no longer yeah. eating a vegan diet. Yeah, like I was really glad that she said that at at some point in a video, but as you said, I wish it was just at the very right beginning. Right at the beginning to make mm -hmm. that very clear right off the bat. Not at the very end. So when someone just clicks on the video, sees the headline, uh, the title, and then starts hearing her talk about all the health problems, yeah, if I was non-vegan, I'd be thinking, oh, wow, look at what the vegan diet did to Bonnie Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, you know, not good. So anyhow. All right. Um, we got some disclaimers before we get into this. You've almost, almost finished. That's okay. Right. That's so bad. I have that No, nothing wrong with it. I do shuffle it in a little bit though. Mm. All right, disclaimers are, we are not doctors. We're not. We don't have any credentials in that respect. Uh, however, we are linking references in the description below this video. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you to do your own research. And we'd also like to remind people that most doctors receive little to no nutrition education themselves. So, Which is very scary. Yeah. Yep. Everything we talk about today is going to be linked in the description. Now we made a lot of response videos before, haven't we? I think the playlist is like 160 videos long now, so we kind of can anticipate what kind of comments we're going to receive. This falls under our disclaimer title. We know what's coming, right? So we anticipate that people will be saying, keep your opinions to yourself, no one asked for your opinion. Um, well, they did actually, <laughs> that's why we're responding, we had so many requests. Um, a lot of people said it was in the comments, I don't care what you have to say about this. But then don't click on the video. This is our video, right? So if you don't want to know what we, what our opinion is on it, then, then you don't have to watch it. Um, but for those of you who have asked what our opinion is, that's why we're making the video. People will also say, mind your own business. Yes, that's now, a good old favourite, isn't it? It is. Now, of course, Bonnie is a public figure mm -hmm. and she made her video public. So we have a right and a moral obligation to the animals mm. to respond to that public video. Yeah. Um, also, that kind of mind your own business is in the same vein and mentioned in the same breath as, you know, it's a personal choice what everyone eats. Mm. It's not actually a personal choice what everyone eats, especially when your food choices involve a direct victim. And when you eat animal products, there is a direct victim for those food choices that you're making. Also, as animal agriculture is one of the leading causes of environmental destruction, that is the destruction of the environment that supports all life systems on this planet, this one planet that we all share, how can that be a personal choice? If your food choices are polluting the land, air and water that we all collectively breathe, live on mm. and, and what have you, it's, it's not a personal <clears throat> choice. So everybody else's food choices are everybody's business. Until we live on planet Bonnie, planet Luca, planet Natasha, and so on and so forth, everyone's food choices are everyone's business. <sighs> there you go. Okay, uh, we, as we said, we have notes in front of us and we're gonna be looking down quite a bit because we want to be accurate and concise. Although this ended up being more like a bit of an essay, didn't <laughs> well, it? Well, I said to Luca, let's make some dot points, just some key words, right? Literally word for word, it's like this beautiful thesis in front of us. That's tricky. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to speak about this issue very broadly, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. And of course, like a lot of people were saying, please help Bonnie, please help get her back to eating a vegan diet. <clears throat> Bonnie is not going to care about what we're saying, what we're going to talk about in this video. I think she and Tim are well beyond that point. Yeah, aren't they? I think uh, Tim is her boyfriend, by the way. If you don't know, who she talks a lot about in her video, and it's a health journey that they've both been on. They're well beyond this point. They're not going to care what other YouTubers are saying. So this video, we're kind of um, making it for people who are maybe in a similar position to Bonnie or, or, or having some kind of gut problems or 
maybe you're non-vegan um, and then you're seeing this and you're thinking, oh God, I could never go vegan and look at all the problems that have happened. So we just want to kind of reach out to those people that are at that point mm. before they go back to, <clears throat> excuse me, eating animal products or... Or before continuing to eat animal yeah. products. Yeah, yeah. And we also want to respond because of we want to create some balance in the comments. So mm. one comment in particular read, uh, two years ago, this is on Bonnie's video, right? Yeah. Two years ago, I would have been upset and deeply disappointed with you. But I'm seeing a pattern with vegans, and I think we need to reevaluate some of the things we think we know for sure. So when we saw that comment, we're like, whoa. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, the pattern with vegans going back to eating animal products We've made many response videos <clears throat> of late. The pattern is the majority of these people have um, disordered eating. A lot of them have mental health problems. There are so much more things to consider and going on in their lives and their bodies and things that they're doing to themselves like water fasting, restricting calories, eating raw food diet only, having one meal a day or two meals a day or just stuff that is, has nothing to do with veganism that is not serving them well and then they're going back to eating animal products for a variety of reasons, but it has nothing to do with veganism or the vegan diet per se. It's what they're choosing to do. So that's the, the pattern. In terms of reevaluating some of the things we think we know for sure, what we do know for sure is the science, right? Yeah, in that 14 of the 15 leading causes of our death have been scientifically linked to eating animal products. We know that animal agriculture is the leading cause, or one of the leading causes of environmental destruction. And we know that we are needlessly killing, murdering billions and trillions, in fact, of innocent, defenseless animals every single year for food worldwide. Mm. So they're the facts. Then mm. it's not what we think we know. No. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So Bonnie's video is 40 minutes long. It's a lot of detail. So we can't possibly okay. respond point by point. So to summarize, Bonnie and Tim have been eating a plant-based diet for around five years and for a while now they've been experiencing gut and skin issues. Now it's very important, uh, this point that we make now. Bonnie said that she had underlying gut issues before she went vegan. So the vegan diet did not cause her underlying gut issues. She had them before. Unfortunately, she doesn't mention that till quite some time into the video, mm, right? Yeah. Very important to keep that in mind. Now, they've seen countless doctors and naturopaths. Uh, they've tried variations of the vegan diet, including a FODMAP diet. Tim took antibiotics for a year uh, for his acne, which has its own set of problems, which we'll mm, talk about later. Yeah. Uh, he experienced depression, weight loss, uh, and everything was linked back to the bad gut health. Mm. And this has been mentally exhausting for them both. Mm. They're just saying how um, it's all-consuming, and they've really struggled with it. And we can relate to this 100%. so much, like mm. so much, hey? Yeah, absolutely. And we've mentioned this before so many times when we respond to people because it's the same thing. Usually people are at their wit's end with a health problem. They don't know what to do. And, um, that's often how many people find veganism. Yeah, that's right. They that's find the diet side of things first and then ultimately connect the dots with the ethics. Exactly. Okay, so just to give some context, so in terms of how we can relate, um, I think my, one of my biggest health problems was asthma. And even when I went vegan, I still had asthma. In fact, one of the worst times was uh, as a vegan. And I remember I would go to sleep at night and then I would... I would obviously be having an asthma attack in my sleep and I would be dreaming that I couldn't um, breathe, like I was either suffocating or I was drowning or something and it would wake me up and I'd be like, <gasps> you know, gasping for, it was the worst, worst feeling. If, if you've had these kind of dreams, you'll know what I mean, put them in the comments um, if you can relate. And it's I, awful. And I used to be an asthmatic mm. myself, so mm. I, I no longer had asthma when you had asthma, mm. but I could relate to what you were experiencing having had it myself, and I used to be like terrified. You were so scared. Yeah, because yours used to be work far worse than my attacks, mm. far worse. And I, and I had bad ones, but yours were like, I was worried I'm where your next breath was going to come from. I'd be coughing. And oh, it, was, it was like almost every night or every second night at one stage. This was... um just before we started to make changes, significant changes to our diet in terms of stopping oil and just just changing things up. And so, yeah, that was really, really stressful because every night I'm like, 
I'm not going to be able to sleep. I'm not going to be able to breathe. It was just, it was awful time. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In terms of you. Oh. Oh, I struggled with candida for seven years and it was very, very debilitating. Mm. Um, I had a overgrowth of yeast on my manhood, my privates. And so it had ramifications you know, with our relationship, obviously, uh, we couldn't be intimate uh, when I'd have these overgrowths. And it was so taxing. I mean, seven years is a really long time. We've been together 21 years, but those were the most uh, challenging, difficult, mentally exhausting, emotionally exhausting seven years in the whole relationship. It was just, we actually didn't know if we could make it through at one point. It was very just stressful. very, very yeah. stressful. And this was even as vegans. Even as vegans, right. yeah. So, um, and you were so desperate. That just I actually, to give you an, yeah, just an, to give idea. an idea of how <laughs> desperate, so that you know how much we can relate to Bonnie and Tim. Mm. I actually drank my own urine for two weeks after having tried every other thing under the sun that I could come mm. across online, both uh, allopathic and also natural remedies. And that's that's how desperate I was, you know. I mean, the reason why is because it's something called urine therapy. Yeah. Okay. So when you're desperate, you're like searching on the internet. And what you'll do anything. That, do anything. The point is, you'll do anything, and that's how desperate I was. So. Well, there's one thing that you didn't do. I didn't change my diet. Is that what you? You didn't go back to eating animals. Oh. <laughs> so you're not even thinking of it because it's not even an option. Not. It didn't even enter yeah. the realm of possibility. It's not a thought that ever popped into my head because from the moment that I went vegan on the 26th of August 2011. I stopped seeing animals as food. I stopped seeing animals as being here for us. I only ever saw them from that point forward as being here with us. So basically, you drank your pee over even the option of eating animals. Absolutely. Right. Okay. So, so ultimately, I was able to overcome the candida, mm. and again, it was a, due to a change in the diet. Mm. It was actually a very, it was the same so change that we me. both made. Mm. And I got over my asthma. I haven't heard an attack in a long time. Yeah, so yeah. we've got videos on that. We can link those below. Okay, so we wanted to mention that for all the stories that we hear um, on YouTube about people having gut health problems and they have to go back to eating animals, and you know, so many. Um, disheartening stories if you like we just want to remind people that we need to keep balance because there are a lot of very positive uplifting stories that should give people you know hope that uh, it's not all doom and gloom and every, you know, people said it was oh everyone's leaving veganism no they're not come on let's let's get some perspective here yeah, for example so, our friend Shamiz from the channel life after colitis and also high carb health mm -hmm. he runs this with his brother his brother Shakul they have an amazing story. So Shamiz had, are you going to tell it or am I going to eat? What I can do? tell if you want. Right, Shamiz definitely. had ulcerative colitis. He was literally on his deathbed mm. and they were going to operate on his colon and remove part of his colon. Anyway, he had lost so much weight and he looked like just, he looked he like was death. He going to die. And his mum found a book and in it it spoke about, you know, the healing nature of plants and a plant-based diet. I should mention, mm. he was not vegan at this stage. No. He was eating a, a omnivorous yeah. diet. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, his mum read the book. She started sneaking in bananas in the hospital. <laughs> he stopped taking the medication that they were giving him. He but didn't. the doctors didn't know. No. And they didn't know that he was being fed bananas on the side. Anyway, he gets better. He walks out of the hospital. And yeah. now he coaches hundreds of people around the world how to overcome ulcerative colitis like he did mm, and IBS and you know that's right so if I was in this situation I would be going to people who have done it who have survived it who are thriving and who are helping others so we're going to link resources down below um, for Shamiz and you know check that out that's a that's a good you know he saved his life mm. he saved his life mm. another Thing we want to share with you. This was a comment left on our Instagram. You read it out? I had to take a big mouthful of tofu <laughs> just before reading this, didn't I? Uh -huh. It's going to be near there the whole time now. No, 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 wait, swallow, take... swallow. No. Don't choke. No, no, I've got it. It's small. Oh, wait, just pause. Go. <laughs> okay. I was that vegan who was the perfect candidate to start eating animals. I had a medical condition that meant my body could not metabolize carbohydrates, and many people have this issue and just don't realize it. Our adrenals control our carbohydrate metabolism, and most of us have weak adrenals due to our stressful modern day lifestyle. I tried a number of ways of being vegan, 
I changed my macronutrient ratio several times and took into account that my body was catabolic, leaning. With the help of an amazing naturopath in Sydney, I figured it out and as my body healed, so did my adrenals and my ability to metabolize carbs. I was never ever going to resort to robbing animals of their lives just because my body wasn't functioning properly. When you focus on the victims, you will work hard to figure it out. Yes, there's another one. Oh, there's another one? Yeah. I was told by a specialist that I would never cope with my condition if I didn't start eating animal products. Well, not only did I find a way to cope, but I am now healed because of a plant-based diet. That's amazing. So we just wanted to share those stories so that, <clears throat> as we said, it creates a bit of balance that you don't always only hear stories of people needing to go back to animals, apparently to heal their gut. Um, here are examples of people healing their gut because they're eating plants. Okay. No, I have to scrape all my sesame oh, seeds and remaining the scraping, rice granules. Oh, the scraping's yeah, so, so bad. Block your ears. Well, I hope you're going to pass Is this ASMR? This. Like, do they like hearing this or do they not want no, to hear no, this? No, 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 no. This is insane. Can I not do noise things? I want to hear this. Not like this, surely. Really? Like raindrops oh. and whispers. And things, but, uh, <laughs> well, can't you whisper to your sesame seeds? No. <laughs> Don't make me joke again. Uh, this is how much I've still got to go, and you're done. So now I'm just going to sit back and enjoy my food, and you're going to go through all these notes. I better leave that there. So <laughs> in case someone joins the video halfway through, like, why is she eating it? Yeah, it's like, that's a bit weird. All right. All right. How's the food situation? Uh, yep. Yeah, no good? sesame seeds. He's looking good. He's looking good. We always have to do like a food check. Good. Uh, no, don't do that. Don't do that? You need to, no, no, I need this water. You need that water, okay. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Okay, so where are we? We're talking about... Um... Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people talk about digestive issues and um, the problem with having too much fiber and we've all, I guess, experienced digestive problems at some point, right? Like bloating is very common, diarrhea or constipation common. I think people's Digestion can go up and down and yeah. it's something that we can all relate to and all experienced at some point Yeah, we've made some videos on digestion before we can link those below because there are multiple factors that so can affect much. digestion it's So many get, yeah. it's very hard yeah. to pin down. Yeah, you know It has to get down to the testing level to find out exactly what might be causing yes. issues. There's so many external Variables. factors and internal and, and we're all different in this way so we're all the same because we're all the same because anatomically, physiologically, and biochemically, we're herbivores. Okay, so a lot of people think that because we behave like omnivores, we are omnivores, when in actual fact, no, our anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry is that of a herbivore. So that's However, very important to know. However, our microbiomes and our intestinal flora, that is all individual and all unique and all specific. Mm -hmm. So what that means is how much fiber a particular individual can digest comfortably is going to vary from person to person based on their specific microbiome and intestinal flora which is going to be affected by a host of factors like their health history their mm -hmm. antibiotic use their pharmaceutical drug use their recreational drug use their sleeping patterns all of those of things. things and many many more genetics so we'll um, give you some examples we eat virtually the same diet yeah right but you tend to digest certain things better than me and vice versa exactly <coughs> oh my god thank you <laughs> So bad. I think it's the sesame seeds. Sesame seeds banned from mukbangs. Yeah, banned from mukbangs. That's a good policy. That's just like, because you can't break them down. So you're swallowing them whole and they're getting stuck because yeah. I'm talking so bad. Really apologize. The point was, I can digest quinoa, no problem. Luca, can't so much. Yeah, I love it, but I don't digest it well. So I prefer to avoid it. Legumes. Luca can eat a ridiculous amount of legumes. I digest them, I digest them well. Me, I'm going to bloat. Now, some legumes better than others. Chickpeas, for me, are better than lentils. Lentils, uh, small amounts. So this is the thing with a plant-based diet. When you're new to it, especially, it's trying to work out what digests well for you and what doesn't digest so well for you. And that is a, a journey for everyone. Well. It is. Now, here's what I found. Is that, for example, um, oh, here we go. Tofu and tempeh, something more processed, digests better for me than eating a huge amount of legumes, right? So I might like balance it out and have less legumes and some more tempeh or tofu on the side so that I can just, yeah, keep that balance. Mm. I also find, for example, um, I can sit down to like a bowl of whole wheat pasta or some uh, burgers in whole wheat rolls, buns, 
And I find that that sometimes will actually digest better than something that is healthier, like a big bowl of steamed uh, vegetables and greens and beans, even though they know those things are better for my body than the more processed vegan foods. But the way I digest them is different because one is higher in fiber. And it's not right? to say that you don't have the steamed veggies, uh, whole grains and legumes and what have you. Yeah. You do, you just create a balance, balance. between the very high fiber whole plant foods and the slightly less fiber more processed plant foods. Exactly. Now I know Tim, uh, he varied his vegan diet as according to Bonnie in terms of the macronutrient ratio, just mm -hmm. as the girl who left that comment also mm. did, you know, personal experimentation, which is also good. We've done that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not so sure because whether he actually varied the ratio of whole plant foods to more processed plant foods in his diet, because from what Bonnie was saying, Tim was eating mainly whole plant foods, and of course, they're very high in fiber, the highest in fiber that you mm. can have, and that, you know, he was having constant issues. So, I don't know, if we were in his position and we suspected that too much fiber was causing our gut issues or contributing to them, we would try that variation mm. of whole plant foods to more processed plant foods. Maybe that variation would be enough yeah. to give our guts time to heal such mm -hmm. that over time we could slightly increase that ratio of whole plant foods back up again. That would definitely be something I would experiment with. 100%. You know? Um, yeah. It's an idea. Okay, so they had a lot of tests done and Bonnie didn't go into the details because there was so much information, but of course, as the saying goes, the devil is in the detail. So. Uh, she gave an overview, basically. Yeah, the overview that Bonnie gave of her uh, most significant test results were that she had a bacterial imbalance in her gut, she had an imbalance in her omega-3 to 6 ratio, an imbalance in her cortisol levels, and high inflammatory markers. Now, we can't go into the ins and outs of each of these because, again, Bonnie didn't give specific details. However, we will link references in the description below this video on these topics. Suffice to say that based on the references that we've linked below mm. and our understanding and interpretation of our those, understanding, right? That uh, gut issues like SIBO and other similar bacterial imbalances can be healed on a vegan diet mm. uh, in conjunction with other protocols and under the help of a professional. Mm. That's what we got from what we found. Everything linked below. So another thing we would have done if we were in their position mm -hmm. and again we're we're giving this information so that people who may find themselves in a similar position don't just go straight back to eating animal products they think about the mm. things that we're saying perhaps and have and have linked down below so I guess what we would have also have done is gone on to Google YouTube mm -hmm. and typed uh, SIBO for example which is one of the, the most common bacterial imbalances uh, that people can experience SIBO vegan, for example. Now, we did that, and the first thing that came up was a video from a channel called Goji Man, who is vegan. Yeah. Right? And it's not just another random YouTuber giving out their opinion. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> that's right, he's, <laughs> Read your notes. Sorry, he's currently finishing a master's in nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist, after which he will study his PhD in mm. nutritional science. So he's got some training. He's got some yeah. training, some credentials, and when you watch his video called SIBO, A Vegan's Worst Nightmare, IBS slash bacteria slash digestion, you can see that he knows what he's talking about. So I would have, you know, reached out to Gojiman, and in fact, he invites people to contact him. He mm. likes to use case studies so mm -hmm. that he can help people because he really... Uh, basically hate seeing all these people who say oh, I can no longer eat a vegan diet and I have to go back to eating animal products because yeah. I've got digestive it issues. It irks him because he it knows that it, it can be it done. Yeah. And he's actually, um, he reached out to uh, Tim Sheaf who recently went back to eating some salmon and eggs. Um, so he, he was guiding him on... Um, yeah, yeah he's, to help him with right. the SIBO. Well, what, what he thought was SIBO. He did yeah. a test and everything. So, um, yeah, that's, that's definitely... Uh, one avenue that I would have explored if I found myself in yeah. this position. I'd say, hey, look, you know, we're desperate and we're suffering mm. here. Uh, we've got a large social media audience. We, uh, we're we vegan, so we don't want to go back to eating animal products. Can you help us? Yeah, because he's saying that, that it can be done, you know, yeah. that, that you can heal this uh, on a vegan diet. In fact, I think he's got a video whereby you can mm. only heal underlying gut issues with a plant-based diet. And yeah. he goes into details about why he makes that statement. Mm. So our understanding from Bonnie's video is that their health problems got better almost immediately 
um, when they started eating animal products again. But she not said not because yeah, not because animal products contain anything that was uh, helping. It was actually what animal products lack, which is of course fiber. Yeah. That is what made the difference. It was mm. not anything specific in the animal products themselves. Yeah, it's what they didn't contain, That's which right. is fiber. Yeah. And of course, fiber. And, yeah, well, it's it, it's only found in plants, so it's not found in animal products, and that's why people on a, a very um, animal product heavy diet uh, are often constipated. And then when they come to a plant based diet, they find everything Ooh, starts moving in the around. bowels again, and they start having more bowel movements than they've been used to on an omnivorous diet. They spend more more time in the toilet than they probably ever have, and that's a normal thing. It's not a bad thing. Well. I know this is not good table talk and if you want to stop eating while well, I just say this quickly but actually it's actually an in and out a very quick in and out mm -hmm. uh, bathroom visit mm -hmm. when you're eating a whole foods plant-based diet uh, whereas you can spend a lot of time eating an omnivorous diet trying to squeeze one out shall mm -hmm. we say so you might go more frequently but you're there for less time that's right sorry I, I just had to don't you just love that <laughs> I know it's not bad. It's not good. It's bad talk, bum but talk. But when I mean, we were talking about guts, a, you know, it's relevant. Guts right? and pooping. That's what that's we're talking it. about, right? Okay. So, so. whilst having less fiber <laughs> <laughs> like might temporarily alleviate the symptoms of the underlying gut issue, that's not the same as saying that animal products have or will heal the underlying gut issue. Mm. After all, Bonnie said that she had the underlying gut issues before she went vegan when she was eating animal products. Mm. So presumably the underlying gut issues were caused at a time whilst eating animal products. Yeah. So, so going back to eating animal products is very unlikely to, to fix the underlying, underlying issue. issue. That, that's what we're thinking. That's what they're, they're and our again, thoughts. Goji Man's video yeah. where he says you can only heal gut underlying gut issues with a plant-based plant diet, diet where he explains it in detail, link below. Yeah, watch him. <laughs> um, I was going to say, yes, yeah, so they felt better immediately because they were eating less fiber. That's the point. Yeah. Right? Okay. Got it? Got it. Good. Move on. All right. However. The issue is that the best available balance of science suggests that by consuming cholesterol and saturated fat and animal protein, you're increasing your risk of developing our leading causes of death like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and some forms of cancer. So, it's kind of like robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know that old expression? Hmm. You know, we, well, not we, but she's thinking that if they eat animal products, it's going to help them with one thing, but it actually could... Increase the risk of developing else. other more serious hmm. diseases. And just preempting some of the comments below because oh, this happens every video time. when we reference videos on the nutritionfacts.org website. You're not credible. You only use nutritionfacts.org. You've yeah. got to have more sources. Listen, <laughs> did you like that? Nutrition facts is like a library, okay? Saying that it's not credible sources because it all comes from the one place. It's like going into a library and saying all of these books, all of these references, all of these studies, I'm ignoring them, none of them count because they all are found in the one library. If I took these references and I spread them out around libraries around the city, then they would be credible sources. It doesn't make sense. Nutrition Facts is the library. They pull together all of the studies. They're not their studies, they're not biased because they're not Dr. Greger's studies. He's just bringing them all in and explaining them so the lay person, like you guys and us, can actually understand them. Exactly. Does that make sense? And nutritionfacts.org is commercial free, so again, it's not biased. Yes, so don't write all this off just because we're coming from one library. We're gonna link a video that explains the all of this. The behind the scenes at nutritionfacts.org. Yeah. yeah. But the library analogy is a good one. I thought so, mm. that was my moment of, oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Tim has introduced chicken, fish and eggs into his diet and Bonnie has introduced fish and eggs into hers. Now eggs, oh, eggs cannot, cannot be called healthy or safe by the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture. Now the thing about that mm. is that the USDA's mandate is to promote the sale of animal products. So it's actually in their best interest for the egg industry to be able to label their products as safe and healthy, and yet they tell the egg industry you cannot use those words. That's incredible. That is how toxic eggs are for the human body. And they've got more words that are blacklisted, not just um, healthy and safe, but there are actually other words that they're not allowed to use for we'll advertising. We'll link a video in the description below. It's fascinating and it's so scary. So basically the point is that 
When people go back to eating animal products, it's usually uh, fish, eggs, and chicken. And the egg part for us is like, oh my gosh, you cannot say that these things are safe or healthy. How, why, like, to, to eat them, to put that into your body, thinking that it's going to help you, it doesn't make sense. Remember, it was just the absence of fiber in those foods that was bringing the temporary alleviation of the symptoms, not anything in the egg itself. Exactly. Now, in terms of uh, fish and chicken, so people often think, oh, it's white meat, it's the healthier meat compared to red meat, right? The thing is, it still contains the same artery clogging, saturated fat and cholesterol and animal protein that are scientifically linked to our leading causes of death that we talked about a moment ago. It doesn't matter what color the flesh is, it still contains those same things. And also naturally occurring hormones. You know, we're eating the flesh of another animal. So And when it comes to fish, Bonnie mentioned that yes. Tim had issues with heavy metals in his body. Now of course fish has been linked to being very high in mercury. Mm -hmm. And if someone thinks, oh, I'll get around that by only buying fish grown in, in uh, land-based aquaculture farms, well, often those fish are fed ocean caught fish. Mm. So those ocean caught fish may have the mercury in them and then they're fed to the animals, the fish that you're buying. So then the mercury ends up in, in the fish that you're buying. Yeah. So if things... you have heavy metal issues, yeah, really. fish is the last you know, food that you want to be putting into your body. These were the things that we were thinking as we're watching their video, we're like little triggers of, oh, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense. Mm. Um, one thing I will add is sometimes when people reintroduce animal products into their diet and they say, oh, I know my source. I'm, you know, the, the eggs are from right next door and, and I know the chicken comes from uh, you know, a small farm and it's not factory farm. And they've made themselves feel comfortable with where these animal body parts and secretions are coming from. However, it can become a slippery slope. Because once you start to see animals and their secretions as a food option once again, it kind of just opens the gateway a little bit. So you might be out and you see something like, oh yeah, I really want that, I'm going to eat that. Well, I already eat a little bit of chicken and a little bit of eggs back home, so it won't hurt, I'll just do that. And then you're at a friend's house and, oh, I don't know where they got their chicken and eggs from, but you know, they've made something, I don't want to be rude, I'm just going to eat that. A little bit more won't hurt. And this happened with Kalel, for example, when she first started reintroducing animal products into her diet, she said, uh, I'm only sourcing particular type of eggs, you know, backyard, friend, or, or what have you, higher welfare, whatever. Um, but then she was shown at a later stage in a vlog, I think it was, mm -hmm. eating some, I think they were deviled eggs, don't quote me, uh, out at a restaurant, for example. Yeah, so now, those eggs didn't come from the, the neighbour, you know, so again, it's this slippery slope. So just being aware of this, that this is a potential danger, because initially people always think, oh, you know, it's okay, they're just having a little bit at home and that's fine. But where this is going to go... You don't know. All of a sudden, hmm. you're just you're eating animals again. Exactly, and from anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, we we're going to talk about this later, but I'll just raise it now because it's we've just started to talk about oh. it. The backyard eggs thing. Oh, we're yeah. going to link some videos below why backyard eggs are not vegan, um, rather than going into all the details. But please mm -hmm. watch those. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one thing I think we can all learn um, from Bonnie's video and her boyfriend Tim's situation in particular is the use of antibiotics. Now, antibiotics sometimes are needed. Absolutely. Right? However, if it's something like in Tim's case where he had acne, you want to be really careful with this because it's not it's not the cure, right? Like what he found, as soon as he stopped taking the antibiotics, the acne would come back. And he took them for a year. Now, a yes. year of antibiotics is really going to muck up your intestinal flora and microbiome. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to help the healing process. Yeah. So be aware of this. You know, when you go to a doctor sometimes, I just... I give out drugs, prescriptions. It's so quick just to, oh, just get this, get this, get this. They'll prescribe antibiotics for everything and anything these days, you know, just sort of willy-nilly. Got to think about what you're putting in because there are some serious ramifications. They are very, very Well, they're indiscriminate, aren't they? They wipe yeah. out both the friendly bacteria as well as the bad bacteria. Exactly. So that's, I think, something that everyone can take out of their video. Definitely. And with the SIBO test, if you're wanting to test whether you have that, I think Bonnie at one point was looking at, say, going overseas to a specific doctor to perform a specific test, if mm -hmm. it was the SIBO one or something similar. So uh, just to let people know, a SIBO test kit can be ordered online and you can have it delivered at home. And then, of course, you would consult a trained professional to uh, work with and interpret the results of the test. 
This was absolutely lovely. I'm like onto my little last bit of tempeh, yeah. that tofu. It is, it's become a great weekly staple. I love it. Um, do you want to take those extra big bits of cabbage? I can do that. Take that, and I'm gonna finish this before we get onto the next section so okay. I don't choke. <laughs> You're not using your plate? Oh, you're gonna take mine. Yeah, okay. all right, let's you keep going. No, it's all right, go, go. Wait, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No, 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 you're gonna drop it. I'm like, not gonna... I know you're gonna drop it. She's gonna drop it. <laughs> I'm not gonna drop it. Alright. Mmm. Right. Hey! Look at our little friend. I didn't eat him. Very good. And you've recovered. Mm hmm. That was so traumatic. Oh my gosh, Sorry. look at him. I'm gonna. Are you listening? It's like you've got headphones in. Bathrooming routine when you're on camera. That's so bad. It's <laughs> so bad. Hey, it's real. That's what we do after every meal. We swish. All right. So let's get on to a very serious part of this response video. Um, we need to speak for the victims, for the animals, those that are having their throats slit. So we've got three clips that we've um, cut out from Bonnie's video. We're going to have a little listen and respond. The reason I'm eating eggs and fish and not like chicken and meat is because I don't feel comfortable eating chicken and meat. Like I, I don't know if I ever will, but right now I don't feel comfortable doing that. Okay. So Bonnie, you are eating meat. Fish is meat. It's still flesh. Uh, there is no difference whether, again, whether the, the flesh is white or red it's still meat, it's somebody's body. But the reason Bonnie said this is because it's a speciesist mentality that we were all indoctrinated into, whereby as human animals, we see ourselves superior to all other animals. And we also see some animals like cats and dogs and tigers and dolphins and whales as superior to other animals like cows and chickens and pigs and turkeys and ducks and mm. fish, Those lambs, Those food for animals. And then within the food animal Then we area. have a, a, another hierarchy there where we say, oh, I won't eat cows and pigs and, and chicken, but I will eat fish, for example, mm. and eggs, which involve the killing of, of yeah. uh, chickens. So that's speciesism. That's, mm. a, that's a mentality that allows one to think of different animals differently. And that's why she's feeling okay with eating fish. But of course to those, the others. yeah, of course to those individuals, their lives matter to each of them as much as the next animal or as much as our lives matter to us. Ethically, I feel okay with that decision. I feel okay with the eggs that I'm buying and the fish that I'm sourcing. So it's not about ethically if the perpetrator is okay with committing that violence. It's how the victim is feeling about that. Is the victim okay with it? Once we put ourselves in the shoes of the victim, that's when we can answer that question honestly, because as the perpetrator, and we've all been perpetrators, we used to eat animals for the first, wow, was it 30 years of our lives? 31 years, yeah. Right? We've all been there where we've paid for the slaughter, for the murder of other innocent beings because we didn't know any better. And so as the perpetrator, we can make ourselves feel really comfortable and justify it to ourselves. But it's what the victim is thinking and feeling. That's what's important to keep in mind. And there is no difference to slitting a fish's throat, a cow's throat or a dog's throat. As Philip Wallen says, in their capacity to suffer, a dog is a pig, is a bear, is a boy. We are all equal in our capacity to suffer, which is all that matters. Yeah. All right, let's just look at the language that Bonnie used in this clip. So I guess to be morally consistent in that oh, case. yes. Yeah, if you're ethically okay with the killing of mm. one animal, you must be ethically okay with the killing of other animals. Yeah, exactly. Um, the wording that Bonnie used here, she says sourcing. I'm okay with where I source these products from. Now this very much reminds us of industry euphemisms that are designed to keep us, the consumers, feeling very comfortable with our actions. Yeah, so for example, the industry says the animals are harvested mm. and consumers source their products. So it's very business-like uh, yeah. language that separates us from the actual victims. From the reality. So we need to start, basically, we need to start calling things for what they are. are. So yeah. harvesting means slitting throats, 
and chopping heads off. Sourcing means paying the hitman to slit throats and chop heads off. Yeah. Very different when we put it like that, when we call it for what it is, instead of using euphemisms to promote and propagate this humane myth. Because nothing humane happens in a slaughterhouse and there is no humane way to kill someone who doesn't want to die. And industry uses these words to make us feel comfortable, as we said, and then as consumers, as Bonnie is now doing, she's using these words. You buy into it, right? literally. Yeah, and, and it makes her feel better and it's kind of making it sound a little bit nicer for her audience to hear. But if we use the words that are really honestly describing the situation, it wouldn't sound so clean and acceptable. Mm. Yeah, It's very clinical, isn't it, these yeah. euphemisms, just like the yeah. neat... Uh, plastic wrapped package at the supermarket is very separated from the blood and the gore and the screams and the terror of yeah. the slaughterhouse. Yeah, we have to be honest in our language and in our understanding of what is actually happening here. Veganism did not cause my problems. I'll never put the blame on veganism for that. I had underlying gut issues, but eating a high fiber diet may have been making my problems worse over time or at least not allowing them to heal. So again, it was very good that she said this and made that very clear. Unfortunately, it was towards the end of the video. It would have been absolutely so much better if it was said right at the beginning just to get that out of the way and made it very clear for anybody who didn't sit through the whole 40 minutes. So that is unfortunate. Okay, so going forth, one of the problems that we have, the concerns that we have, is that a lot of Bonnie's uh, channel is based around what I eat in a day videos. And I'm sure at some point in the 40 minutes, I think she said she would be making a what I eat video to show, you know, what she's now doing. Um, this for us is a massive problem because she's obviously going to show uh, the fish and the eggs that she's eating. And what it does is it starts to normalize the consumption of animal products again for her audience. And this is dangerous because they've been seeing Bonnie online for the last how many years she's been online as eating a, a plant-based diet. Now all of a sudden it's normal and it's okay to be eating the flesh and secretions of other animals. And so once people who are watching this kind of start to feel like, oh yeah, it's just being normalized by one of the people that I love to watch online, then when they're out and about... They feel more comfortable it's... paying others to slit throats and chop heads off as well. Yeah, basically. It's just making it seem like it's an okay thing to do, right? And Bonnie presents everything beautifully. You know, her account's always gorgeous. She always looks great. She's young. She's pretty. She's just... Influential it's a, to it's a great impressionable image. young people. And you don't want to have a great image with, uh, you know, Promoting flesh violence. and secretion. That's right. Yeah, it's not food. It is violence. And so the normalization of this violence is a very strong concern. Yeah. That's, that's where we're at, how we're feeling. So we want to finish up this video by saying, you know, a lot of the time when somebody goes vegan, if they've been vegan, uh, I might have to do this to be honest. If they're eating a plant-based diet. Right. For a period of time, and maybe they saw something at the beginning of their plant-based diet journey where they saw some slaughterhouse footage or some factory farm footage, for example. Mm -hmm. But if they haven't connected and reconnected and kept coming back to that footage and those images every now and then along their journey, they can become disconnected from the motivations for going vegan to begin with, the animals. Mm -hmm. And this is very easily done in this largely non-vegan world that we live in where you know, eating animal products is considered normal, natural and necessary by most people and we're being bombarded by media's advertising of the consumption of animal products all the time and your friends and family and colleagues are all partaking in it so if you don't keep reconnecting with the footage of, of the animals suffering and being having the most despicable violent acts done against them it's very easy, easy to, to become drift away and become disconnected yeah so how do you connect yourself how do you keep yourself connected you have to you have to keep watching stuff. I mean, there's a new film that came out called Dominion. It was released in 2018. It is like the updated version of, of Earthlings. Uh, we have seen Dominion six times. We don't need to watch Dominion, obviously, but we keep doing it. We, we do screenings when we're on our activism tours. We're going to continue screening it around the world this year as we're traveling for activism tours. Because and we understand the power of this film. Yes. To, to not only help not yet vegans go vegan, but also to help existing vegans become active vegans. Yes. So that they can no longer just 
stop participating in the violence and exploitation towards animals, but actually mm. take action to try to stop it. Because when you watch that and when you continuously think of the victims and reconnect to what's happening to animals, it's very difficult to then, I don't think it's even possible to say I'm ethically okay yeah, with it's eating impossible. fish and Call eggs. It for what it is, it's impossible. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, when you become active for animals, not just, you know, eating a plant-based diet and taking lovely photos, when you are actually becoming part of the animal rights movement and taking part in things like a cube of truth, for example, with the group Anonymous for the Voiceless, and you're standing there and you're holding a screen showing slaughterhouse footage. In all weather conditions, maybe it's boiling hot, maybe it's freezing cold, maybe there's rain, maybe there's snow. We've seen so many people you're standing in there for hours holding a sign or a screen in the one spot, you know, you're doing that for the animals. You're not going to be ethically okay. It's solidifying okay. your connection. That's right. You're not going to be ethically okay with then eating the flesh and secretions of the animals on the screen that you're holding. So what we're saying is... When you're bearing witness at a oh, saving yes. event vigil, yes. and oh. the trucks carrying the animals into the mm. house of slaughter are stopped, and they're all scratched up and they're battered, and, battered and defeated and dehydrated and crammed in there and in you can hear them screaming feces and urine and you can hear them screaming and you're looking into their eyes and they're looking back at you and you know that the only reason they're on that truck is because consumers are paying for their flesh their body parts and their secretions you're not going to be ethically okay with contributing to their suffering and their murder you're just not mm. so what we're saying is Please, and we've said this in so many of our response videos of late, because it's the same thing. It's the thing. same thing every this time. This is the pattern. It's a lack of ethics. This is the pattern. There's a lack of involvement in animal rights. It's not just a diet. We need to start getting ourselves active and involved and being on the front line and seeing this and witnessing it and making that part of our social media presence if we are influencers. Um, and we can all do this even if we don't have a large platform. We need to stay connected. We need to help the movement in more ways than just... Here's my morning routine, my exercise routine, what I eat. Those things are great, they're important, they, they attract people and that's A-OK. -okay. But let's evolve a little bit past that and start to focus on ethics more. And if you don't... That is the game changer. That's it. And let's say that someone doesn't go to a vigil or they don't go to a cube of truth or they don't take part in a direct action everywhere disruption. Yeah. They can still promote those groups on their social media platforms with their audiences yeah. they can talk about dominion they can host a screening or organize a screening or they can share it online they can watch it themselves mm -hmm. you know what, what whatever yeah. you know there needs to be more engagement with animal rights in addition to vegan lifestyle yes and so when you're following accounts because people are saying to us you know i don't know who to trust now i don't know who to follow everybody's going you know back to eating animals not everyone is going back to animals they've been a number of people, but let's keep some perspective here. There are plenty of animal activist accounts for you to follow and people that are doing more than just showing their diet and, and cute pictures. So follow people who have more of an ethical focus in what they do online. And you will feel very empowered and connected and see this movement growing as it is. So we need to keep perspective. Um, yes, people are feeling very distraught and they're feeling like, you know, one person said, but everything's kind of crumbling and, and veganism, what's happening to veganism? Veganism is growing like anything. I mean, the January has had, are they getting close to 300,000 signups? I believe signups? so, yeah. They're breaking up, up, records. Up from 180,000 last year. Right, we have doctors who are promoting a plant-based diet, who are thriving with their patients and helping people. We have vegan athletes. We have so many people coming to this diet and lifestyle and just going for it, and it's amazing. We have billionaire entrepreneurs investing millions of dollars into meat, uh, clean, clean meat, lab meat, startup yeah. companies and what have you. Right. You've got the uh, big players like Tyson, one of the world's leading meat producers, investing in the Beyond Meat burger and also Memphis Meats, I think. So it's 2019. It, the future is vegan. It's happening now. We're saying this basically. Don't get all bogged down and distressed and distraught because a handful of YouTubers are going back to eating some animal products. Don't let this bring you down. Don't let it bring the vegan movement down. There is so much more it than what happens. It can't bring the vegan movement never, down because the never. vegan movement is a juggernaut that cannot be stopped. There is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come, said Victor Hugo, mm -hmm. and veganism's time has come. The animals have waited long enough, as Philip Bolland says in his speech, which we'll link below. Please watch that for encouragement, for motivation, for inspiration, and any other speech or yeah. documentary film related to animal rights. You know? Yeah. 
We've got many videos here on our channel. That's hundreds that exactly. you can watch. Don't get stuck on a small group of people that are going back to animals. Okay. Don't think that that's what veganism is and everything's you know crumbling. It's not. Keep perspective. It's bigger than just a handful of YouTubers. And as Happy Gilmore said, harness the good, <laughs> block the bad. That's right. That's it. Forget it. Let it be done. Move on. Get involved in the animal rights movement. 2019 is not the year of veganism. That was 2018. 2019 is the year of vegan activism. That's why we're doing vegan activism tours. That's why we're coming out to see people, to do our uh, activism workshop, to inspire them, to educate them, to motivate them, to get them involved with us. All right? Thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments down below. What did you guys think? This was quite the response. It was. All right. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. You can um, also ding that little bell so you receive notifications every time we upload a new video, which may or may not work. No thanks to YouTube. Click it anyway. <laughs> and remember until next time that going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do. See you next video. Bye, everyone.